a couple days ago, I got a chance to go to Spitfire's LA Encompass event. And it's always fun to get into a room, catch up with so many composer friends. Thank you so much for all coming all the way down here to Downton. Downton? Not Downton Abbey. For this video, I thought it'd be kind of nice to share the takeaways I had after going to the event. Evening started out with a performance by the Calder Quartet. And this quartet is best known in the classical world because they do a lot of work with living composers, but many of us probably are more familiar with the quartet because they were the group that performed on Bear McCreary's award-winning Emmy score for Da Vinci's Demons. The quartet played a really nice selection. It's always a pleasure to, to hear Live musicians, especially when you spend so much time working in the box. And then Spitfire's Oliver Patrick Wetter sat down to interview the quartet a little bit about their history experience, as well as working with composers. Now, the big takeaway here for me is how the quartet talked about sometimes collaborating with those composers in the room, like not just on paper and interpreting the music, like sitting in the room and talking about different techniques, uh, different sounds that they can achieve and how they would do that. And that takeaway really was, I need to get back into collaborating more often. Reminded me of interviews uh, that I got to sit on, on with Thomas Newman, and he was talking about coming up with some of those classic Tom and Snooman scores we all know and how the foundations of those are really him with five or seven musicians sitting in his living room with these different percussion and vibes and, and melodic instruments and just kind of jamming and playing to try to develop something unique and exciting, a feel. So he's kind of conducting, composing, and directing all at the same time. I think that's pretty inspiring, something I probably should try to dedicate to do in the not-too-distant future. So many benefits from there, not only in creating a unique and original sound, but also expanding my compositional vision. Spitfire's Christian Henson took to the stage to talk a little bit about music technology and how it's actually influencing modern scores of today. But it's interesting, I compare um, like, like harmonics patches on stuff that we've done recently to the harmonics patches we made you know, 10 years ago. And I kind of prefer the ones we made 10 years ago because they're full of mistakes and artifacts and stuff. And we made this great harmonics patch quite a few composers used it, so everyone was writing harmonics, and the musicians got really good at making harmonics. So we've got to find something else that's difficult. So I think a lot of musicians are going to be bowing with the back of their bows for the next few years. <laughs> I thought that was a big um, takeaway too, because I hadn't really thought about how the sample libraries we use as composers are being used for mock-ups and then being requested for those kinds of articulations, those kinds of performances to be performed with real orchestras. So I thought that was a, a pretty enlightening bit of info. Now, the headliner, so to speak, of the night was Trevor Morris. Christian sat down to interview Trevor. I did the heavy lifting for 10 years in Toronto. I was in the engineering and production business. I was in the studio for 10 years, seven days a week. Then I worked for Hans for a very long time, for very long hours, and I was out of experience. And now I've come out of it and I found it works for me. I'm not preaching, I'm just telling you my own experiences. I don't do my best work, push to the limit every day, all the time. You know, it used to be to the point of almost obsession. Uh, and uh, I don't want to paint the picture that I'm dispassionate about what I do. In a way, I'm more passionate than ever. I'm just more practical about it. And my craft, which again is not innate, you're not born with it, and you learn it. I've been in the business a long time. It's, tuned enough to the point where I can make it, I can fit it into the way I want my life to go. It was great to hear Trevor talk a little bit, get a sense of his background and journey, and also um, about the changes in lifestyle he's had since starting in the industry. My first big television series, which wasn't my first series, but the one that put me on the map, if you will, was called The Tudors, about King Henry VIII. 
and I was writing on, um, I guess, lots of samples at the time. There's no budget for live musicians, but I said, I'm going to hire one person on every show, or maybe two musicians. And it cost me uh, $1,200 or something like this. So there would be a violinist I use all the time, Michael Levine, he's not here, I don't think, he's a good friend, and a woodwind player. But what I would do is, this is funny how this evolves, I would put a, if you're an engineer type, I'd put a limiting effect on it to bring this live musician way forward in the sound field. I put reverb delay and a, some lipstick and a hat and gloves and <laughs> fancy boots. So all you heard was this live musician because my programming sucked. And the samples weren't quite there yet. And it became my sound for that show was this really hyped up engineered solo musician, whether it be the woodwind, whether it be a cello. Uh, it was just me grasping for something to make it sound music. Because the samples weren't there yet, I didn't have to broaden my fader like I do now, and I wasn't very good at programming yet. It was just, just trying to make it work somehow. So to answer your question, that began the beginning of always having a live musician whenever possible. And, and when he was talking about the tutors and how he went about producing the uh, score and theme song, it really got me thinking that necessity is the mother of invention, even for media composers. Christian and Trevor talked a little while about the difference between um, scoring for film, how film had been the king of media, and now how series, long format, uh, episodic content is really the king, and what the differences really mean for a composer working in those medias now. But, however, in television, I never meet the director. The way it works is Unless it's a pilot where they're setting the tone, they direct, they do the director's cut, which is the first cut of four. So it goes director's cut, producer's cut, network cut, final cut. Which cut means basically the director goes, here's my edit of what I think it should be, here's some tech music thrown in, and I'm out. Never to be seen again. By the time I parachute in, they're long gone. Even at the top. Even at the top. There it's not. So I never have any feedback from the director unless it's someone I've worked with before or it's a pilot. So by the time I get there, it's studio, uh, executive producers, plural. Um, it's very much not a director-driven thing. So that committee approach that is television is another craft to get used to because there's multiple voices. And that Early kind of brought career, up the uh, fourth takeaway here, which was that I hear this and I actually give this advice a lot. When you're creating music or sound design or working uh, for music, or sound for media, you're really part of a team trying to deliver something useful. You should be a resource for the team. No one's born with the ability to handle multiple deadlines at the same time, you learn it. So I kind of learned it one step at a time and learned that, and I say this all the time, that it's a little cynical, but it's what I believe. At the end of the day, the reason I get hired back is more because I service my clients than I wrote great music. If I didn't write good music, it wouldn't hire me back at all, so it has to be good, and I shoot for the, you know, as high as I can every day. But no one loves a cue that was two days late, so in a way, dealing with the insane deadlines or the inane requests for notes at midnight for the 9 a.m. dub is the job. And you can't say, that that's unfair, and you're not treat me properly, and they'll go, great, and uh, I think Christian's available to do your next <laughs> episode of TV, so. Thanks for taking a little time to check out the video. Hope that you got a little bit out of it, and if you weren't able to make the LA event, I hope this shined a little light on what it was all about. They're really cool. You should try to make it to any kind of these events. I know that Spitfire has some in, uh, in London as well from time to time. Now, if you were at Encompass, the Spitfire audio event, I'd love to hear what you got out of it. Please leave your comments in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe. Always love your support. And head over to samplelibrarywreview.com for the latest news, reviews, and weekly deals page.